super nervous. Hi, how are you guys? It's been a while. Let me just sit down and get a little bit comfy before we get started. But uh, how's everybody doing? How is everybody? Um, so, it's been a minute. It's been a minute for us. Um, I'm sorry that it has been so long. Ugh. I gotta be honest guys, life has changed so much since the last time I did a Fresh Takes and Mistakes episode. And um, I've missed it, I've missed it. But the thing is, is that the journey that I'm on now is very different than the journey that I was on the last time I did an episode for Fresh Takes and Mistakes. And I really wanna keep doing them because I remember how great they were and I remember how much I enjoyed them. And um, sharing what I was learning and throughout my journey and, and how life was and you know fresh takes and mistakes so I decided tonight that that doesn't just have to apply to the intentional weight loss journey that I was on when I started it because that's not the journey that I'm on anymore and that's neither here nor there it doesn't mean that I'm not you know trying to live as my best self and trying to be a healthy person it's just not what my journey is about or surrounding or it's not all encompassing anymore so but I missed you guys and I was journaling tonight and I thought god this would be great to share with the same people that I was sharing fresh takes and mistakes with this would be great to share with my friends this would be great to post about and start a conversation and I am so excited to be doing this and I do plan on going back to a semi-regular schedule maybe like once a week um, like we did before so if you want to engage with this, if you want to have a conversation about this, I am here for it. I want to hear what your thoughts are. I want to hear what you have to say because this journal prompt that I did today came from a self-love deck, the self-love deck from Ace, I got to tell you, apparently my eyesight's not as good as it used to be, Ace Metaphor, tonight's conversation, the card game. There's apparently a bunch of these, but I loved this one. I got it for Christmas this last year and I loved it. So. Tonight I sat down to journal and I didn't really have much to talk about, so I picked up one of these cards and I gotta tell every time I pick one of these, it's great, it hits, it's fantastic, and it gives me a lot of insight into what is happening in my mind, and I just am excited to share it with you. So this one says it's labeled this is the caption, because there's like a little caption at the top and it says, which parts of your I'm sorry, the caption. No more free samples is the caption. I know some of you, some of you can relate to even just that caption, but I digress. Which parts of yourself do you often give to others before they've earned them and how can you better protect those parts? Just let that sit for a second because I was like, mm. and some of you guys, you have an answer right now. You have an answer in your mind right away. You know exactly what those parts are. And I want to see them. I want to see them in the comments because uh, it took me a minute because I have a hard time labeling what my actions, what the feeling is behind my actions or behind my my behavior, what the motive is or what the underlying feeling is. And I, um, it took me a minute to realize um, what I do. And I realized that I give a lot of my energy and my care and my nurturing to people before they've earned it. And what I mean by that is, in my case, it means I'm investing a lot of my time, energy, um, thoughts, uh, conversation, all that around solving other people's problems, um, figuring out other people's lives, understanding other people's emotions. And that is how I care. That's how I invest in people. So what, I, what to say about that is that I give that before it's earned. I'm giving so much of it before it's earned. And I feel like a lot of us who do that get labeled with a negative connotation. And I wanna just set the record straight as to say that in my case, at the very least, and I'm sure that some of you can relate, that that has more to do with caring so much up front, put investing so much in people up front. And I would never change that about myself. I'm, I'm a very caring person. It's the upfront part that I would think really requires some boundary setting. So in the second part of this question, um, how can you better protect those parts? 
because when you do what I do, where you, you know, you get so invested and you get so much caring and so much, um, you put so much energy into people up front, you burn yourself out and you don't spend any time taking care of yourself and you are constantly trying to do for other people. And then you set this expectation that that's who you are as a person. That's the person that they're signing the social contract with is this person that just does and does and does for other people. And you end up bitter because people aren't really like that. You're not even really like that. I'm not even really like that. Um, but I pretend to be like that or I make myself like that so that I will be liked. So these people are signing a social contract with somebody who really just doesn't exist because I'm not genuinely the person who just wants to do for people constantly. Don't get me wrong, I love doing for people, but, and so and helping people and things like that, but that's not, that's not all there is. And when you when you lead with that foot forward, you create this expectation that's, that that's how, who you are as a person. And then later, when you need something down the road or you're not in a place that you can give, give, give like you once were, then you've broken this social contract that you didn't even know you made. And then the other person is like, what is going on? What is going on with this person? Or, God forbid, you're attracting only people who need you to solve their problems for them. And that's no dig on them. I think um, each person in that situation has their own thing that they're struggling with. Looked like my camera was gonna fall there for a second, guys. Um, that's, I think each person in that situation has something that they're struggling with. And as my, my friend Stacy said to me, she said, when you, she experienced where she was trying to solve other people's problems or help them get through things or whatever the case may be, and you're putting that person as a, at a disadvantage when you do that which I thought was brilliant because it's absolutely true. When you get somebody that needs to be liked and that wants to do for other people up front so that they will be liked all the time together with somebody else who doesn't know how to solve their own problems because they're always attracting people who want to solve the problems for them, then you put that other person at a disadvantage as well because they're never learning how to solve their problems. You're just solving them for them. And instead what we can do is we can hold space for those people, you know, when we have the energy, when we have the space, instead of trying to solve problems for them. But we can't solve everything. We can't do everything for everybody because you put them at a disadvantage and then you burn yourself out. So the other problem with that is that you, you do that and you're doing for this other person and you're auditioning for their love and you're auditioning for their care and you're, and you're interviewing for the position in their life that you, that you want to get. And then you forget that they're also supposed to be interviewing for the position in your life that they want to get. You're also supposed to be figuring out whether or not you want that person in your life, not just the other way around. And I think so many of us get into this insecurity or this um, need to be liked that we're just auditioning constantly for other people. And then we wonder why people don't want to do for us because we have set the expectation that everybody deserves a spot in our lives. Everybody deserves to be in that position that we're, that we're not even inter interviewing for. They don't, there's no requirements. There's no pre prerequisites. AKA boundaries, AKA expectations. You can't, you have to set these things with the people that you have in your life. Otherwise you're always gonna end up disappointed. And if you're the person like me, who's going out of your way and putting so much energy and putting so much thought all the time, then when you don't get that reciprocated back, you're gonna be bitter because you signed this social contract that you were gonna be this way and they didn't. But in your mind, because you were this way, because you showed this much care and nurturing and love and energy and all this stuff, you thought that they should reciprocate all the time and you should be important the most important thing when you finally need something that's not fair because they never signed that social contract and then on top of that i mean it goes even deeper to think you're not doing all this out of love and nurturing and care like yeah you care about the person but you're really doing this to be liked and again it goes back to how can you really know if you love or care for this person you never interviewed them to see if they deserved or even really wanted the spot in your life that you wanted them for. And did they want it with you or did they want it with the person that you were pretending to be when you were giving so much care and energy and time and everything into this up front from the beginning without any pre prerequisite. So I don't know, that's just food for thought, but I would love to hear what you guys have to say. Which parts of yourself do you often give to others before they've earned them and how can you better protect those parts? The answer to the second question for me is, we just have to show up 
as our most authentic selves. And that can be so hard because rejection is terrifying, especially for women. Um, because I think that we don't grow up as the pursuers. Um, I think that's getting better. I think things are changing. But when you're not growing up as the pursuer, you're not growing up with the ability to handle rejection. So um, you have to kind of learn who our most authentic self is and then learn to show up unapologetically that way. And that is terrifying. I am learning it still right now at 30. Um, and I know people much older than me that are also learning it or have never learned it. And people who are much younger than me who have seem to have been born into the world with this ability to be their most authentic self. And I just, I admire it so much. So yeah, I think that's the way we do it. And I think it's no matter what your answer to the first question was, but no matter what you do up front to people or for people or whatever that, that haven't earned it, the answer is always to be your most authentic self or to work on being your most, most authentic self um, and to set those boundaries, which is a part of being yourself. I would love to hear what you have to say um, and see what your answers to those questions are. Maybe I'll do a couple of these. Maybe that's what we'll do or or other journal prompts. I get journal prompts all over the place. Um, I get inspiration all over the place all the time. So I look forward to keeping sharing these um, little tidbits, these little thoughts with you guys uh, and connecting with you once again, because I missed you so much. I missed your interaction. I missed sharing my lessons with you guys. And I'm hoping that now this can be a little bit more of an interactive space where maybe you can share me, share with me your fresh takes and mistakes.